now we're on episode... what? I think we're on 11? Yeah, we're on 11. Hey, yeah, hello everybody, it's Dean Spillabean back on your screen on another episode of the 20x20 Satisfactory World. And one might notice that I've done a little bit of decorating. It does look a little uh, different now, don't it? <laughs> so yeah, I got a wall made. I don't have everything a wall yet, but I've got a wall on this side, which is where I mostly am, so that's that's a start at least. Probably just gonna off-camera work on this every now and again, just to improve it. But uh, today is not nuclear reactors. As much as I want to get into nuclear reactors, I don't want to do those quite yet. Mostly because I got a bunch of other stuff that I got to do in preparation for it, so I think the reactor stuff's gonna be in the next episode. Till then, uh, just kind of an update on the aluminum stuff, because I only, I, I think I only touched up on it last episode, but it just kind of showing stuff off. I made a second water container line, as well as two lines to go back, because uh, one problem I had is that I wasn't making enough water, and I was able to just kind of rebuild a few things to make it actually work. Uh, right now my only problem is that I don't have enough bauxite, weirdly enough. I mean, these two first containers are getting pretty full, it's just the last one just doesn't get anything. And as much as I want to go over there and work on it, uh, I want to work in this biome to make it easier to get the bauxite on the train, because I need to do that, but I don't want to work at night because it looks a little spooky in here. I don't understand why does this place look so spooky. So that's gonna have to wait until some other time. But in terms of actually making plates and aluminum casing, I think I'm actually making too much? I'm not sure. I'm making like 550, 540 casing and uh, sheets a minute, which is pretty nice with what I've got here. Still not running at capacity, because the stuff of the hundred is at the top aren't getting the scrap they need, mostly because the refineries aren't operating at max capacity either. And even still, I'm getting a lot of spare resources just to around here. But before I get on to automation-based stuff, I gotta make a new floor. But not just any floor. It is a floor for batteries. How many batteries, you may ask? All of them. Just all of them in general. And by all of them, I just mean, like, a lot. But anyways, batteries. What do I mean by batteries? Well, there's things called power storage units. Pretty self-explanatory, really. They require more wires than I have available. Anyways, batteries. I gotta get these placed. Give me a bit. Connect, connect, connect. I think I'll also get a foundation ceiling on this. 25 batteries. Oh, gosh, this requires a lot of wires. <laughs> it's gonna take me a couple trips back to the depot down there. Which means... One, two, three, four, 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 four. 24 and... 62,000 wires? <laughs> Well, uh, I know I got some spare wire just lying around. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have to use this. I don't even have this hooked up properly, but uh, I guess my wire factor is just going to be useful now. Well, I say useful, but it's not even running at the moment. I should probably fix that. So yeah, main problem, uh, due to how my power works, uh, <laughs> if I turn that on, bump, it, it's over my capacity now. So I have one hour of power, is what I would say, if I didn't travel all the way to my aluminum production and simply uh, deactivate that one. So now, manageable? Yeah, it's manageable. It's like we're out on the edge. So I'm not creating aluminum anymore, but I'm making wires, which that's fine because I'm going to need a lot. I'm also going to need a bunch of quick wire, which I don't really have any manufacturing for, but I got some in storage, so that's fine. Today's just a massive, I'm just gonna make sure I have things for this, and hope, hopefully it works out. Alright, let's get a few of these things down, get this started up. That's nice. So how many can this store? So each of them hold 100 megawatts, and there's 25, so it holds 2,500 megawatts. 2,500, and there's gonna be 24 of them, so it can hold. 60,000 megawatts, which, uh, that's pretty nice, yeah. You, and then plug you in. So I got some batteries downstairs, and that's storing about 2,600. So I just doubled my battery capacity already, and that's kind of nice. You want to see me do it again? Boom. Just, I just doubled it again. 
Uh, can I connect that here? Oh. Is that able to? Okay, yeah, it's full connect. So yeah, rinse and repeat this process uh, a lot of times. Behold, the battery floor. Oh gosh, there's so many batteries. So many of them. So according to these calculations, it'll take an entire day to fill up. I guess the next thing to do is make another level and start making more stuff. But the real question is, what kind of stuff will I make? Well, I got an idea. And it requires drones. I think it's under trans... I... No, I don't, I don't even have drones unlocked yet. Okay, coming down to this thing. What do I need for drones? Aeronautical engineering, I need casing and radio units. I got motors and storage and I got casing as well, but radio units? I got nothing for those guys. Let's see, radio units. How to make. I need casing, crystal oscillators, and computers. I got computers kind of on standby and I got a bunch of case, but... Oscillators? I don't got those yet. So, crystal oscillators, what do they need? Quartz crystal cables and uh, reinforced plates. And if we look here, uh, over in my aluminum area, I do have some space here, and I kind of already got cables and reinforced plates coming in. Right now I need to get a bunch of uh, quartz crystal automated, which, let's see... I could probably fit several constructors down here, and have like another quartz line coming up. Although, I might... Uh... Okay, hold on. Is there any other quartz in the area? Let's see, looking at the map, so way over there, and oh, there's some up there. Idea, I might just... You know, I was going to try and think, oh, maybe if I get, like, some more drones up and running, then I won't need to make a supply line for that. Well, that doesn't work, because I need batteries as well. Ugh, no, not these batteries. Let's see, where is concrete? There you are. I'm gonna build a road, because trucks hate rough terrain. I don't know why. In any other game, uh, trucks just don't care about terrain, but in Satisfactory, they do, so I'm gonna fix that. Okay, how big is a truck? Kinda big. Uh, let's see if I can, if I can remake this so that there's three platforms. Uh, yeah, I think that's big enough the two can be on there comfortably. Let's turn it into asphalt. Add some side railing. And let's see, maybe... Oh, I need cartridges! I don't ever get to use color cartridges. They're really cheap to make, but it's kind of hard to use a bunch of them. Color cartridges, there we go. Put back the flower petals and... Wait, is my... Is my Nobilisk dead in here? What? I... I know I dropped it on the ground. Where did it... I know for sure I dropped it on the ground. Wait... <laughs> what? Why... Why was it so tiny? It's not... It's not that tiny. I, I think that's a bug. <laughs> but whatever, I just wanted to get this so I can get lines. Do some decorating. And what about pedestrian walkway? Because I'm going to have to have something to walk on this with. Let's see, go down. Well, a little bit of time later, and I got a segment to show. Do -do 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 -do. It, uh, it is this. I did have some arrows on these, but I guess patterns aren't saved in the blueprint designer, unfortunately. But it does have street lamps in them, and if I pull out a truck, it does have enough room to comfortably fit a truck in that area, and I can also have just two going to and throw, so I don't have them interrupting each other. Now, uh, I kind of want to spend some time and get some more segments. So I want this stuff to be modular. That would be cool if I could get it modular. So, a bit of time later, and I got some prototypes up and running. And I think they're actually good enough to run a... Uh, hold on. It's a bit of a tight squeeze. But, they can use it to get around. Actually, is this too tight of a squeeze? Not really? Uh... Well, uh, like I said, this is a prototype, so... I'll definitely need to check it out and test things. 
Okay, where would be a good place to set up a truck import station? Okay, so the quartz is some ways over there, so I might be able to make it around here. Okay, I'll start that. So, let's pull out one of the blueprints. We'll get out a straight one. Get that constructed. Ooh, look at how perfect it is. It's not really perfect, I need to work on it some. Okay, so I should just be able to place a whole bunch of these if I get the angle correct. It's so easy to just uh, place a bunch of these. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is a road. Well, anyways, time to make a platform for uh, the tractor truck uh, stop off the, the, the... This thing. Uh, no. Alright, we got two normal quartz nodes. Time to actually get a muse of all. Oh, I don't have steel pipes. Uh oh. Well, luckily I have the infrastructure for a road, and I just so happen to have a vehicle in my pocket. With the fuel in my pocket as well. So I'm gonna find a little odd is that there's just random bumping going on, and there's no reason for the bumps. It's just. There's random bumps. Bumps as in just look at the tractor. What is it bumping? Steel pipes, steel pipes, where are they? Here they are. I'll take a couple of these. <laughs> that's a... that's a road. Suddenly I skipped forward a little bit, and I uh, added all the lighting in, and I got everything set up. So now we're gonna get a truck up and running. So I want to show you... not a truck, a truck. I'm gonna use trucks for this one. Alright, give us some fuel just to start out, and we'll start our little run. Start recording, load in cargo. Also, I'm trying something a little different. Look at that little crack. Whoa, it like perfectly comes out. It doesn't perfectly go into the truck, but uh, it comes out pretty good at least. Probably need to make this little road slightly bigger, but I'll do that eventually. Also, I'm also going to try and make that run. Actually, I'm just going to fix that. Okay, got that all set up. Time for attempt number two. Yeah, I've made that turn a lot easier. What about the turn over at the corner? How does that do? Eh, also fairly well. Nice. And now I've got a long road ahead of me. I've just pretty much got to make sure this doesn't bump into anything. Alright, coming up to the other station. Just going to slow down a bit more. Taking the curve. I need to fix that a little bit later. And unload. <laughs> Unloaded. Which, that's pretty cool. So, quartz got sent over. And let's get, a, get back into place and finish the loop. You know what? This is a nice little road I made. Although I will admit it's a bit samey, which... That's gonna happen with blueprint designer stuff. I wonder if there's a way to... Or I might just go through and modify it a bit more, just so it's not as samey. But that's for another time. Main thing is that I got quartz going. Alright, made it to the finish line. Woohoo! Wow, public transportation sure is different nowadays. So, some amount of time later, I did a little bit of modifications here and there to make improvements here and there. <laughs> I need to get rid of that roadblock. But I kind of improved the little docking area. Add a little bit of color, a little bit of functionality here and there. I'm gonna get run over. <laughs> yeah, there goes the truck again. Off to get some more quartz. I'll probably do some more changes eventually, but the main thing is that I got quartz getting transported to this container. Now, I gotta get it up there. Not that it's a com complex process to get the quartz up there. But it is a slight aggravation. It's just one of those I want to work on it another time things. But I don't have time to work on it, so this is what we get. Okay, so I got some cables over there and a refined plate line. And I got quartz here for quartz crystal. I just need to know how many constructors I need to make. Requires 37.5 to get 22.5. 
Let's see, hello truck station, where do you get about 658? We'll just say I'm getting 600. So 600 divided by 37.5 is 16 exactly. Now that's the kind of information I want to see. Construct constructors as such. And before you know it, Quartz Crystal in production! Wait, how much is this? 0.5 multiplied by 60. I get 360 Quartz Crystal a minute. That is important because if I get out Crystal Oscillators... If I look at this, it needs 18 Crystal a minute. So, 360, divide that by 18. I can get 20 Oscillators a minute. So I can make 20 manufacturers worth of all this stuff. That depends. Uh, do I have the materials from refined plates and cables? So the refined plates I'm pretty sure is at 30 a minute, but if we pull up it needs 2.5 and I need 20 manufacturing worth, so 50. So I need to ensure that I have 50 re uh, reinforced plates a minute on this line. I'll double check that later. Cables, how many cables do I need? 14 a minute. For one manufacturer's worth and we multiply that by 20 is 280. And if I recall, I believe this line of five constructors works on it. There's five constructors each one making 30, so that's only 150 cables. So... I don't have enough cables is what I'm trying to get at. So originally I thought of having all the manufacturers here, which I might be able to. Let's see, how much space does a manufacturer take out? So if I put one there, two, three, four, four, three, four. Uh. I could probably get them to fit in here. I just need to relocate where the recyclers are at. <sighs> There's no good way to do this. I'll, I'll, I'll just keep placing. So I guess quick thing. Uh, for funnies, I was going to see what would happen if I turned on like all of my machines just to see honestly what would happen but the sound is kind of delayed. Now, is that bad? No, I mean, not particularly. However, whenever sound is becoming a little incomplete like that, that's a better way to hear it. That definitely means there is a slight issue somewhere. However, if I would have to say what's causing like some lag around here, it could honestly be all of the particle effects that's going on from these batteries here, all of the machines, everything that's running all at once, and like, gosh, th th there's a reason why people build stuff very far away from each other, just so they don't have to render everything at once. But I gotta say, this is insanely impressive that even this is able to be rendered. I've said it once, I've said it twice, I've said it two billion times, the developers have over-optimized this game. Well, all of those are hooked up, uh, none of the rates are complete, so I'm like performing way below standard or whatever. But uh, I need to get a whole bunch of machines up and running first, though I just kind of want to get like radio control units automated at least, and then work on stuff. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, look. There's some crystal oscillators getting automated. Woohoo! Okay, so the crystal oscillators are pretty much done. I'll, I'll, I'll maximize it later. Now I gotta get to what else for radios and computers and casing. If I'm going to make 20 radio units, how many casing do I need? So let's do 2.5 times 20, that is 50 radio units a minute. Priority times. Uh oh. I I don't have 800 aluminum casing a minute, this is just like 550. Okay, that's gonna be a plan for another time probably after nuclear power is like a small task to do as a thing. But I gotta get nuclear power at some point. That also means that I gotta get drones, because I don't want to have uranium going through my facility at all without drones. So that's the goal. For that, I need the radio control units anyway, so I'm just gonna make... You know what, it might be worth it to make a bunch of computers. I do have some of the materials, like the plastic... I don't have really cables, but I do have copper that I can get up here, as well as copper for the circuit boards, and plastic that I can use for plastic canvas. 
Do I even have enough plastic a minute spare for that? Or do I have to go through a whole secondary process? Oh gosh, I don't know about that. But I do have a way to get the iron for screws up here. I do have a lot of spare coal, so <laughs> I'm thinking I'm just making a bunch of steel ingots and using them to make steel beams. Which will then allow me to create an absurd amount of screws. That way it doesn't take up as much space. Uh, let's see... Let's put down some foundations here. Okay, a bit of time later and I got a little setup up and running. So, my answer for getting all these routed everywhere, I got three truck stations. One over there, one here in the middle, and one over there. Yeah, they kind of see. Line up the map. Uh, you can actually see, there's the three stations. I got a little tractor that goes to all three of these stations and it goes right back to the main docking station in which it deposits a bunch of iron ore at the, the truck station and uh, sends all that iron ore up to a storage container that then puts it on the train. Speaking of, where is the train? I would like a ride out of this place. That would be nice. Well, I guess while I'm waiting for the train, uh, other issue Computers. Those things require plastic. Circuit boards also require plastic, and I'm a little pressed for time on plasticky stuff. Okay, that didn't make any sense. Basically, there's the oil. That, that's like some oil that's used to make my uh, factories run. And then there's the oil that's over here that's used to make the little bit of plastic and rubber for a few functions. And where's the nearest oil from here? Uh, it is way over here and there's several nodes here not not any pure nodes but oh wait no there is a pure node that's nice but my base is way over here and the oil is way down there so i've got to hook up another train system to get all of this oil pumped over actually okay so i also need canterium ore and that's kind of there i can also get iron and limestone and I can have another station in this area, have that send across the river, and eventually get back to my base again. Oh, my train's here, I gotta get on. Well, if I get uh, another train up here, I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna put it. As in, like, the tracks to get up here, but probably the same thing that I did with this one. <laughs> oh gosh, now I'm in a blueprinting mood. Okay, nothing too crazy. I don't think I should really do anything crazy, but basically, there's the ramp. I don't feel like putting it down because I don't feel like deleting it. There's like a little station, uh, a steeper ramp as well, and a flat one, so I don't have to use the station as often. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to do another train thing like I did in the aluminum episode, but get it all the way up to this level instead and use this to make a bunch of plastics and whatever else I can use that oil for. Alright, got another railroad set up, and I have no idea how many more of these I can do before everything just gets so condensed. Now, all I gotta do is get another train line set up, and get it all the way to the edge of this coast, around the corner, and have a station there, and then another station over there. Okay, I'm at the area that has... The Caterium limestone iron thing. I just need to figure out where all that is. So, Caterium, where's that at? Was it up there? Oh no. Oh, it's right there. Okay, well, that, that makes playing my life a little bit easier. Here. Not sure. Wait. Oh! It's a resource well! Oh my gosh! Why didn't that come up on my map? Huh. You know, I think it's because I don't have resource wells uh, researched yet. 
Okay, change in plans, and this is actually a significantly better. Okay, what do I need for resource wells? Uh... Advanced aluminum production, and I... Need radio units! Well, uh... And a lot of wires. I guess I'll just, uh, make some radio units. And... Wait. Wait. <laughs> Time to go visit our good old friend, the coupons. I have had a lot of these stockpiled for this. Okay. Radio control units. I'll just buy... No, I want two stacks of these. Actually, what else is there? Factory guard. You know, I have so many of these things. Jeez, that's a lot of tickets. Uh, I'll just buy those two statues. Silver hog. Still got like 80 left. Guess I'll resupply on health. Uh, shatter rebar, that might be nice. Whatever, I'll buy all that. Oh yeah, what were those statues? Uh, whoop. It's a silver hog statue. Let's see, bronze pioneer statue, I'll just plop it there. Silver statue, I'll just plop it. Hmm. Okay, so that should be everything for this? Yeah. If I pull up production, resource well, and resource well extractor. There are another, like, massive thing to build. You get a well pressurizer, you plop that down, it makes a really cool building. However, this on its own doesn't produce anything. And basically, all of these will just, uh, be an output, basically? Okay, how much oil can I get out of this? Let's see if I just pump it up to a lot. 450 oil a minute. And those other nodes over here probably will make up the rest. You know, uh, most of my stuff up there isn't optimized yet, so I'm just gonna get that one hooked up. And then have it so later, I'll get another train station from here and route it over to the station I'm gonna build here. And this is gonna be a huge station, because I'm gonna need a lot of oil being sent everywhere. <laughs> well, you know what? This looks like an area that I can put a train station, so let's see what I can do here. Get that connected up. Freight car, freight car, freight car, freight. So trains all set up. That's nice. Get that set up. Oh yeah, off it goes. Well, we're not going to be needing it for a little while, so that should be fine. Hello, Rhino. Goodbye, Rhino. <laughs> Oh! Did he just rebound onto the cliff? What in the... How did you survive that? Well, time to get to more, I guess, interesting matters. I gotta get all of this oil and other materials set up. Sent over. Now the amount of uh, fluid platforms here might be a bit overkill, but again, this will probably be another episode or whatever. Uh, there's some more oil over there. I'll have another train that drops off a bunch of oil here, which should fill up the rest of these platforms. I find it funny that these are just carrying like one or two oil and they have to use an entire tanker for it. <laughs> oh. Ooh, that's quite a shot. Yeah. I wonder if, like, as an update in the future, they'll do some more, like, small horror elements like this, because this looks terrifying to be in. Okay, so I did some calculations with, uh, how much plastic I need in order to make the circuit boards and computers and other stuff required. Uh, I need 77 and a half refineries. So, plan to just kind of help me out a bit. See, how many can I fit in here? You know, I could theoretically fit four in here. Now, is that a good idea? I don't know. 
But at least this way I could potentially squeeze things down. Oh gosh, this is going to be extremely compact, isn't it? That's it. It's going to have to be. And I need seven, seven and a half. Uh, I need approximately 20 blueprints up. Okay, place it next to that one. Now I'm just going to get a line, basically. And bada bing bada boom, you get something that looks a little bit like this. So, <laughs> it's starting to look like a crazy city in here now. And this is what the piping looks like. There's probably slightly better ways on to how I gotta pipe this up, but I think it looks cool with the step piping. And obviously I'm over my power capacity, so all of my power storage units are just going crazy. See, all these refineries are making plastic, very little plastic at a time, but they're all getting grouped up onto one belt and getting sent off. However, there's a heavy oil residue as a byproduct, and those get sent to all of these refineries and turned into petroleum coke. Now I gotta start on the next level and get a bunch of copper machines up and running. So copper, what do I need that for? Uh, mostly for copper sheets. Of which I got two options, I can either make up more refineries, or just some constructors if I have a bunch of iron and get smelted. Unfortunately, that's my only option. So I gotta get a bunch of smelters up, uh, up and running. How many, you might ask? Uh... <laughs> 77 smelters, and what does that look like? About, uh, that much. More accurately, about this much. Now, that doesn't look like 77. However, I kind of did a little bit of compacting magic in here. So much that I'm getting trapped. So yeah, this is another case where I just got a smelter thing. This, uh, this block has about 14 different smelters in it. And all of them are outputting forward, either smelters are on the bottom or mergers on the top. Uh, stuff like that. Oil, uh, oil? No, ore gets transferred into the smelters, each of them as well. Now, do I have the copper ore for this right now? No. I'll work on that later. Whoa, wait, where'd all my copper ingots go? Over to the copper sheet, I think. <laughs> yeah, wonderful transition, I know. You know, looking at this, this is starting to put my weird wire thing to shame. But yeah, all of this is to get a bunch of copper sheets ready. It's, uh, 815? If I actually have the copper ingots going in. So I guess kind of a funny thing. You know how many smelters I put in place where I put, a, like, uh, I don't know, 84 or something like that? I kind of like... 82? A lot. Put down a lot. But basically, I needed a ton of wire so that I could make a ton of cables. And then I kind of found out, although I probably should have figured this out a bit earlier, that I could use alternate recipes. So basically, I just take the, the, the rubber from refineries and excess oil, pump them into some uh, assemblers with not as many wires, and then I save like 300 wire a minute. Now, now I have like more smelters than I know what to do with. So I'll figure something out. Basically, now I got like 600 cables a minute coming in. Not yet, because I don't have all of the... It's not at capacity yet. Okay, okay, I think I've had enough for the day time. To get I already got Katerium up and running. What? And I don't know what's going on, but I think like every time I look away, there's like a new whole building section. Of what is this? Like copper sheets and plastic getting combined to make circuit boards. So many circuit boards. And I guess since I have a bunch of excess cables, and now I'm gonna route it back to my crystal oscillators and got those manufacturing. And, uh, of course, it's kind of a logical conclusion that uh, all the circuit boards and other whatevers gets put into a bunch of computer manufacturers. And this is getting a bit out of hand, ain't it? Anyways, I guess I should just go ahead and get some radio units up and running too while I'm at it. And after a bit of time, I finally got some radio units. So, that's pretty neat. Okay, so I think I went a little bit too fast and I think I got a little carried away. Because, uh... <laughs> I ended up making a lot more stuff, and actually, I think I'm just gonna fall for a bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
I might have made a little bit of a mistake. I was like, oh, I want to get into drones. You know what? While I'm at it, I'll just automate some radio units. That would be a cool idea. In reality, I didn't really need to go through all this effort for radio units. I mean, I'm going to at some point, but I probably shouldn't have done that with a bit. Basically, I might have spent a, t a bit too much time getting carried away about making all of this, but I guess I might as well show off what I made. So yeah, down here in the refinery floor, there's refineries everywhere, plastic getting created, heavy oil getting sent off to these overclocked refineries. Turns it into petroleum coke. Now all that petroleum coke gets sent off to be combined with all that iron that I got earlier into some foundries to make steel ingots. Ideally, a bunch of these steel ingots are going to go throughout the rest of my facility to replace a lot of machines, because that is a lot of steel ingots. I think it's like 3,000 a minute or something like that. But over here, also have a bunch of copper ore getting smelted into copper ingots. That's getting turned into copper sheets. Also some spare oil getting turned into rubber, combining with some wire that I got over here to make cables. The copper sheets and plastic get combined into these circuit boards. I get sent off to make a bunch of computers. And then the crystal oscillators from downstairs get combined with the computers as well as some aluminum casing. And uh, they make radio units. How many radio units? About this much. I think it's about 40 a minute that it's at. However, it's not a capacity because uh, of all the things I spent a lot of time doing, I didn't get a lot of the oil coming in very quickly, so... <laughs> I remember I was like, hey, yeah, I'm going to build a thing way down here so I can get a bunch of oil, and then I never did that. Of all the things I didn't do off-camera, this is... <laughs> I think I'm just gonna stop and actually focus on nuclear power. This is getting a bit ridiculous. Oh, do you know how ridiculous this has gotten? So if I get close to these refineries, you might hear... Not much. Why? Because I turned off the sound. Why? <laughs> because all of these machines running at the same time ends up having their audio overlapping so much that it just sounds terrible. I've also turned off the power storage sounds because it's a similar problem. <laughs> Speaking of, thank goodness I invested in this power storage thing. I can run my entire facility for five hours. Or more if I kept it charged, but yeah, my whole facility is running right now. <laughs> All the different machines are working as hard as they can to do whatever they have possible to do. I might dedicate some time to show this off later, but not now. I've got to... I gotta get this episode edited. So I think that's just gonna end the episode. I kind of spent a bit more time than I probably should have working on all this stuff. Uh, I no joke was just gonna straight up make the assembly directors and get that over with, but I was like, wait, Dean, you've been, like, building all this for, like, a week straight. It, it's not good for you. You should, like, stop or something. Oh, yeah? Well, who's gonna stop me? Me! And then I stopped me. But anyways, now that I'm here and not Dean, I will take advantage of this power and stop production of production. What, what do you mean, stop? Yeah, stop look, just don't question it. Just don't question it. Okay, look, I'm taking over now. You stay over there for a moment. You take a break. And just have a moment. Right, fine, I guess. I'm gonna check on YouTube for a bit. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, uh, this is the first part of the nuclear saga. The saga of me eventually getting nuclear power, eventually. The idea of this episode was to get towards drones and make drones. But then I realized I needed radio units. And then I made radio units automated, which, oh gosh, that was a lot. I don't even have all the resources required to get it to run properly. But the infrastructure is in place, so that's nice. Also gonna start getting nuclear power around that time, or at least like start with it. The whole idea with drones is that I want to get uranium up in my base, but I don't want uranium going through my stuff so that I have to constantly uh, wear a hazmat suit to be aware of hey, whatever. Hey uh, what is it? Have you seen our last episode? What do you mean? Look at the view count. But <laughs> Well, that's interesting. I guess, uh, thanks for checking me out. That's pretty cool, I guess. I'll have more details about my thoughts on this occurrence in my next State of Dean video whenever I get around to making one. But whatever. Basically, this episode got radios automated, uh, gonna get drones automated next episode. And by that, I mean just get batteries up and running. And work towards the end of the nuclear saga, where I have power plants that power my whole factory without having to rely on the uh, backup generators. Anyways, that's going to be the end of the episode. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it at least some amount. 
and uh, you all have a good night.